Hello, my friends, and happy Sunday. Welcome to this week's edition of My Journey with Jesus. Thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Dave Little, and I am not a pastor or a professional speaker. I'm just a guy living in Madison, Wisconsin, and God has put it on my heart to use my YouTube channel on a weekly basis to discuss what I have learned from his word as I journey with him very imperfectly. And for today's topic, we are going to talk about some parables about the kingdom. Uh, we have been moving through the book of Luke. <clears throat> and now we are continuing on in the book of Luke and exploring chapter 13. In chapter 13, Jesus presents a couple of parables about the kingdom of God. And we'll take a look at those today, and we'll also jump over to Matthew 13 for one other parable about his kingdom. <clears throat> so the question is, what is the kingdom of God like? And Jesus takes this up in Luke chapter 13 with a couple of illustrations. The first being that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. It is a tiny little seed, but it's planted in a garden, and it grows into a full-sized tree, and as such provides shelter and nourishment to the world. The kingdom of God is also like leaven, or yeast. When a small amount of yeast is added to a big batch of flour, the yeast is kneaded and massaged until it is firmly enmeshed with the flour, and the yeast causes the flour to expand and to flourish into a full loaf of bread. These are two very simple illustrations of how God's kingdom starts with a small thing, a handful of people. And the, that handful of people can spread their influence to create a meaningful and sustaining movement like a mustard tree or like a loaf of bread. The parable in Matthew 13 is a little more detailed. Jesus lays out a scenario about a farmer who plants a field of wheat only to have an enemy come along later and plant weeds in the field alongside the wheat. Actually, it's a specific kind of weed that Jesus speaks about called a tare. The tares look a lot like the wheat, but they produce nothing useful and they sap resources away from the wheat and reduce the quality of the harvest. So as the wheat and the tares grow up together in this field, the servants of the farmer recognize what's happening and suggest to the farmer that they weed out the tares. Basically pull up the weeds and get rid of the weeds. Uh, like many folks would do in their gardens today. But the farmer has a different approach. The farmer says, no, for while you are gathering up the tares, you may uproot the wheat with them. Allow both to grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather up the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them up. But gather the wheat into my barn." Later on, the disciples come to Jesus and ask him to explain the meaning of the parable about the wheat and the tares. And here's what Jesus had to say. The farmer who sowed the seeds is Jesus, the Son of Man. The enemy who planted the weeds is Satan, the evil one. The work of the evil one, the seeds that he has spread, will continue to grow until the time of the harvest. And here's what Jesus says about that day, the time of the harvest. Moving on in Matthew chapter 13. So, just as the tares are gathered up and burned with fire, so shall it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send forth his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all stumbling blocks, those who commit lawlessness, and throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, but the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. 
And this takes us back to what we talked about last week in our discussion of the problem of evil. God is not going to obliterate evil, but the day of accountability will come. God is not going to obliterate evil in, in our lifetime. He's not going to sort through and, and pull up the tares and leave the wheat to grow. But until that day of accountability, the people of God and the people who are not following God will continue to coexist like the wheat and the tares in the field. And that brings us to the overarching question about these parables. What is the underlying message? Why is he delivering the message in this setting? And how are we to respond to these messages today about the kingdom of God? So, to understand the context in which these parables were delivered, first we need to examine what the Jewish people of this era were expecting from the kingdom of God and from the Messiah. The nation of Israel had a history of being enslaved, first by Egypt, then overthrown and exiled to Babylon. And now they find themselves in the, in the day of Jesus being subservient to the Romans. And as a result of, of this history and, and what they read in the scriptures, the nation of Israel expected the coming Messiah to be the conquering king, a military powerhouse who would overthrow Rome by force and put Israel in the position of power and world domination. The Jews were familiar with the concept of the suffering servant that was prophesied in the book of Isaiah. But they did not connect the suffering servant with the anticipated Messiah King. But God had other plans. As we talked about last week, the biggest problem faced by Israel and the biggest problem faced by humanity as a whole was not their political status or their subservience to Rome. The biggest problem with humanity is sin. And God needed to send his son to deliver us from sin rather than delivering us from political inferiority in order to establish his kingdom. Jesus came not to be the conquering king. Jesus came to sacrifice himself for our forgiveness and not to overthrow the kingdoms of this world. This is the core of Jesus' message through these parables to give people an understanding of how God intends to establish his kingdom. So what do we learn from the parables? The tiny mustard seed and the little bit of leaven illustrate that God's impact on the world will come from the small things. And God's impact in the world will grow incrementally. God will establish his kingdom on earth, not through power, but through love and growth of his earthly kingdom will not be imposed from above. It will flow from within the culture. And this is exactly the way things went down with the early church. After the death of Jesus, only a handful of followers remained. And God used this little band of about 120 believers to establish his church and his church has been active. His church has been growing and changing lives for 2,000 years of, of, from, from mustard seeds and leaven. The parable of the wheat and the tares is also instructive to us today. The people of God are the wheat. We live among the tares and we will continue to coexist until the time of the harvest. As Christians, we are to be part of the culture. As, Jesus, as, as the Bible instructs us in Jeremiah 29, 7, Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will have welfare. God calls us to be engaged with the world, spreading the word and sharing his love in the knowledge that when we do that, we are advancing his kingdom. God's eternal kingdom will come. The day of the Lord will arrive, perhaps in our lifetime, maybe in 50 years or 500 years or 5,000 years. 
But when the day comes, Jesus will return. He will bring his people home and he will rid the world of sin and suffering. As the parable of the wheat and the tares illustrates in, in Jesus' explanation at the conclusion of that episode. But in the present age, God is growing his kingdom from within the culture by the influence of his love reflected through his people. And how awesome is it that we as fallen and sinful people get to be part of his work. And that is our challenge for this week. Our challenge for this week is to reflect upon how we can love and serve this world in ways that will demonstrate God's love and influence the culture of this world for his kingdom. That's my prayer for this week, and I hope you all will join me in praying for our culture and seeking those who we can serve and love in the name of Jesus. And that's where we will wrap things up for today. So thank you so much for tuning into this week's devotional video. It is a privilege and a pleasure and a joy to know that folks are, are checking out these videos and to hear the comments and the feedback I get on a weekly basis. If you did enjoy this video or if you have questions, please leave your comments in the uh, comments box below. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below and that will promote this video in the YouTube search algorithms of other users who may be looking for inspiring devotional videos like this for their own walks and their own journeys imperfectly with Jesus. If you want to hear more from the channel, you can hit the subscribe key down below and you will get notified whenever new content is posted to the channel. And with that, once again, I will say thank you all for tuning into this week's devotional video. We will look forward to another video next week as we dive into Luke chapter 14. And until then, God bless you all and go in peace.